Hello my hungry friends! Today we're making a delicious Polish apple cake. Jabłecznik! Welcome back to Polish in Kitchen. My name is Anna and today I'm going to teach you how to make a delicious Polish apple cake called Jabłecznik. This is a recipe that was published in uh, a mini book that I published, self-published last November. And it's a mini book called Polish Your Kitchen Book of Memories Christmas Edition. And in it, I talk about um, a little bit about uh, the traditions of Christmas. And I also list all of the dishes that my family normally eats at Christmas. So it's about 30 recipes um, in here and we have uh, Christmas beetroot soup and mushroom filled um, dumplings that go in the beetroot soup and mushroom soup and cabbage and peas and others. And one of them is this delicious apple cake called Jabłecznik. I'm just looking, oh, there's a picture of it. Mm, just delicious. Mm -hmm. Recipe posted on my blog, polishyourkitchen.com, and I'm uh, posting a link to the recipe under this video. So let's get to it. I have um, ingredients for my crust ready, and so I have um, a cup of powdered sugar, two yolks, and one egg white. And the second egg white I have separated for uh, to top our crust uh, before baking. And I have baking powder and two and a half cups of flour. Oh, and uh, zest, we're gonna zest the lemon, about half of this, this lemon. And I have butter in the fridge. I will come get it. I will go get it. The key is to keep your butter cold. We want this crust to be nice and flaky and uh, the little bits of butter will, while baking will kind of melt into the crust and make it nice and um, soft and flaky. So we're going to start by putting our eggs in our mixing bowl and I'm going to put a pinch of salt in here too. And I have a cup of powdered sugar so we're going to beat this together until fluffy. fluffy. It's been what? A couple, couple minutes? Not even. A couple minutes maybe, not even. Uh, so this is just turned nice and white in color and it's nice and fluffy. So that's, that's good enough. We're going to remove the whisk. And to it, I'm going to add flour. I have two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And one teaspoon of baking powder. And zest my lemon. Carefully. This will add just a little bit of that uh, lemony Tang. We're going to also add zest to our crust. All right, that's good enough. And then I'm going to mix this just on for a couple of turns just to get the whites, uh, eggs and egg whites in there a little bit. And then the rest we're going to do by hand. And the trick here is to, this is going to be very dry, as you can see, very dry, which is fine because uh, because that's what we want. But as soon as we put the butter in there, it should, it should combine to a nice nice even dough, sweet dough. Actually, it's not super sweet, right? No, I wouldn't call it super sweet at all. I would call it perfect. Perfect. I'm just gonna move these things away so I have room for... 
on my working space. And I have um, 14 tablespoons minus two, so it's or it's two sticks minus two sticks of butter minus two tablespoons, and that's 200 grams of butter that is cold, and I just cut it into kind of smaller cubes. <clears throat> so I'm dumping that in here, and I'll, I'm going to work by hand now and try to combine these ingredients. And the butter is going to end up being kind of lumpy. But it's going to pick up a little bit of the egg, and if the lumps stay, that's fine, as long as we can create a dough that kind of will roll out. It's already combining a little bit, and as soon as I can get a little bit big, a little bit uh, firmer ball, I will transfer this onto my surface and kind of work around a little bit. So this apple cake in Poland, there's kind of two names for different apple cakes. Uh, one is Charlotka uh, and one is Jabłecznik. And Charlotka is mainly uh, the cake that is made on this kind of crust. So this kind of crust we call uh, Ciasto Kruche, which means crumbly. And it, it's mainly butter, uh, eggs, flour and powdered sugar. And um, jabłecznik will be a cake that can be done with any other, with apples, they're both apple cakes, with different types of dough. So this could be uh, ciasto biszkopto, uh, biszkoptowe, which is mainly eggs, and it could be drożdżowe, which is yeast cake. So it kind of depends. And this is starting to form, so I'm just going to kind of, I, I don't want to knead this, I just want to, for it to combine into a ball so I can refrigerate it for, for a little while before baking. And when, when my grandma used to make this, she would start with a pile of flour on her work surface and she'd make a hole and add eggs and then kind of start from there. I like doing this. Do you remember eating this cake by grandma? I do. It's one of that and Rosu are the two memories I have culinarily of Baptistasha. Baptistasha is uh, my grandma on my mom's side and she is uh, she was my culinary inspiration she passed four years ago, and here we are. Should be proud to know that we're cooking her recipes. Okay, so this is kind of where I want it to be. Maybe just a little bit more, but you don't want to be adding any more flour to this because this is the the dough needs to kind of be wet like this, <coughs> and. In just a minute I show you how you can still see kind of bits of butter in it. So this is what I was talking about. You kind of want to see it in there. A lot like making uh, biscuits. I like making biscuits, yeah. For the American community who bakes. Kind of like... You like biscuits and gravy? Biscuits and gravy. You want to see the, yes. the butter in it. So this is, yep, this is close enough. I don't know if you can see, but there's little bits here and there. So that's good enough. We'll roll it out later. We want this to uh, cool in the fridge pretty good. So we'll put it in the fridge for, uh, I guess, as long as it will take us to make the filling. So I will wrap this, clean up, and see you right back. And on to our apples. We're gonna wash, peel, and core about 10 apples. Um, I have about seven because mine are kind of big. Um, and I like using a kind of a sour apple and 
when I lived in the United States, I normally used uh, Granny Smiths because I, I like the texture of them. They're nice and hard and nice and tang and sour. So I would use those if you can, unless you have access to any other sour apple. Here in Poland, um, I often use either apple called Papirówka, which I'm not sure there's a American equivalent. They're, they are relatively small and kind of all green, light, light green apples. My mouth's watering. <laughs> we had a, a apple tree like this in my, in my grandma's garden. Uh, they were tiny apples, but there were just tons of them. So my grandma would, grandpa would pick them and then she would core them and actually prepare the filling for this apple cake ahead of time like this and she would store the jars in the basement cellar for the winter and we had this cake probably every weekend she would open a couple jars and her half of her work would be done you can do this ahead of time also i would use my filling that i have in a jar but then i couldn't show you how to do this so we're going to peel these and um, once we're done with peeling, we'll shred them. Last step, we're gonna, last to the second from the last step <laughs> is to shred the apples. And I've shredded most of them and I have them in my pan here heating. An idea is to cook off some of the moisture out of them. So then when we put them on top of our dough, it doesn't get all soggy. Keeps the dough nice and flaky. Uh, and to it, we're gonna add a little bit of cinnamon and just tiny bit of sugar, especially if you're using a tart apple. Just add a just tiny bit of sweetness, but it's not a, as I said before, it's not a sweet cake. So here's the apples, and if you were to prepare this ahead of time, you can put it in your jars and just seal it as your jar manufacturer, you know, recommends. You boil it or bake it, however you prefer. Depending on the size of your jar, it'll tell you how long to cook it for to kind of seal your jars. So this will definitely reduce for us and this recipe is for um, a 9 by 9 inch pan, so it's not super, super big, but it's going to have a nice thick layer of apples, is what we want. So I'm going to add to this uh, a quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and just a quarter cup of sugar. Just regular white sugar will do. Mine is brown because everything is different in Poland. And I think I'm just going to add an eighth of a cup because these apples seem a little bit sweeter to me and I don't want this to be too sweet. My cameraman is sick. I'm sorry. And he has to work even though when he's sick because he doesn't have any insurance. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> so we're gonna give these... Oh, I want to put a little bit of lemon in here too. You're supposed to remind me. Put lemon in it! So I'm gonna zest about half a lemon. Watch your fingers. Don't zest your knuckles. Don't zest your knuckles. And we're going to put this little bit of lemon juice in here. So we, sh we shredded these on the largest, um, how, where, how do you say this? We call, we call it on the largest eye. Uh, I would say on the largest grape. The largest size grape. Yeah. Just a hand grate. Yeah. And these are starting to 
Get the juices flowing, which is the idea. We don't want this to be mush, complete mush like applesauce, but we want them to be cooked and the moisture out. So kind of depending on your stove, my super fast and professional camping stove <laughs> seems to be doing the job and it's working fast. I have a cut on my finger and the lemon the found, lemon it, found it, yes. So I would say, I think in the recipe I say 30 minutes, but kind of watch it. And if the moisture is out, they're done. But I would say probably, I, I guess it depends on the apple too, because if you get really juicy guys, it'll take a little bit. But we'll cook these down a little bit and then I'll show you what they should look like. So these have been cooking for about 10 minutes and I can see they're starting to stick to the bottom of my pan a little bit. So that means they're becoming dry and that is good enough for me. I see that like when I pull the apples back there's no liquid kind of flowing down. So this is good. We're going to keep it like this. We're just going to turn this off and I'm going to cool this for probably about minutes. I want the pan to cool down. I want the apples to cool down a little bit too before I put them on my dough. So I will see you in a few minutes. So our apples have been cooling for probably a good 30 minutes or so. They're not completely cold but they're not hot anymore so that's what you want. And our dough was resting in the fridge so now it's ready and I have prepared my nine by nine inch pan and I think nine by nine is about 20 couple centimeters if you're in uh, that kind of part of the world and I've lined it with parchment paper because I don't want it getting stuck to the pan and when it's ready I can just grab by these and lift it up out of my pan and no fuss now you can do uh, you can do this a few different ways. The dough is pretty hard, so sometimes what I do is I take the hand shredder and I just on the largest eye I will shred the dough over my pan and kind of just pat it down. Or you can, um, if I can get to it, you can just roll roll it out, which that's what I'm going to do today. And it's pretty hard, but you can now see the little speckles of um, butter, which is just lovely because it's gonna make our dough nice and flaky. So um, we, the one part is gonna line the bottom and the sides, and the second part is gonna just fill the top. So I want the part for the bottom a little bit bigger. So out of this, uh, if I were to cut it in half, it would be here. And then I'm going to take a little bit more, so this much more. Here's half. I'm going to go this way a little bit. And this will be my topping. I'll put this here. I could also just pinch pieces and uh, also just uh, pat it flat. But I'm going to roll it today just to show you a trick. So I have two pieces of parchment. And I'm going to put this in between, and this is really hard, so I'm using all of my Polish strength. Can you tell? I'm going to roll this out, and you can turn this. And we want this to be probably about half inch. So I got to put your muscles to it. If my lovely cameraman wasn't holding the camera, he'd be doing this today. This is much more entertaining. <laughs> 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 Do you like looking at me struggle? Yeah. <laughs> You're so mean. I know. <laughs> I need an extra set of hands. 
but if babcha could, I can too. Okay. Roll this out a little bit more. Put your muscles to it. This is calling for a disaster. <laughs> Are we there yet? Almost. Let's move this side of it. I will earn the calories to for this cake today. <laughs> okay. And now um, to get this onto my pan, I remove one and then take this and put it on top of this and then flip. And go like this, and like this. And also this is a little bit uneven, but we'll get this in there. But the trick is to cover the bottom. So this, this side is in. And notice I don't have, stop laughing at me. It's so noisy. <laughs> I don't have paper on the side here, which I probably should put a little bit of butter on it. I'm gonna get butter. Just to, uh, I'm just taking a little soft butter and just on the side that's not covered. But I didn't want paper there because like it feels that this fits better. So now I'm gonna put push this in here and then this stuff that's the dough that's coming off to the off of the edge, I'm just moving to where I don't have any. And this doesn't have to be perfect. This is homemade cooking. It doesn't have to be super even, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just gonna taste delicious, that's all that matters. You can feel free to double the recipe if you wanted to do like the larger pan, which normally grandma would do that. Make a large pan, we would eat a couple pieces of dinner and then we should pack the rest for us to take home. That was so good. Did you have a question? Yes. What's the question? So this cookbook of yours, yes. that is brilliant. And wonderful. I know, isn't it? Where do I get it? Oh, you can get it at your local Amazon mm. store. So in America, Amazon.com. In Canada, Amazon. Ka. Ka, C A. Um, Italy, Germany. Yeah. It, Germany. De. De. Uh, Great Britain. G B. G B. Right. I don't know. Something. Yeah, just look at your local Amazon and you should be able to get it. And I think Amazon has lowered the price, by the way, which I don't have a say how much my book is. <laughs> Amazon tells me it was listed originally for $17.95 and now I think it's for about $9. So I think so it's, a, it's a good time you, to buy. If you buy it now for a Christmas gift later, it, not only are you getting your shopping done early, but you're saving money too. Oh my god. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, so this is it and I'm just gonna puncture the dough a little bit. You don't have to. And see what happens. But this will just let a little bit of the air out. But I'm not too worried about it. And I'm gonna put all of my apples in here. And if I was to use my jarred apples, they would be cold completely, which also is fine. But see how thick of a layer this is? This is not just, you know, like here, let me put an apple in there. This is serious stuff. And even it out just like this. And then we shall, I have made quite the mess back here. 
shake our parchment again. And you get to see me <laughs> this all over again. <laughs> and I'm gonna do the top. I should have said at the beginning of this video, if you were looking for a short video, this isn't for you. Because we're making apple cake today. So there'll be a lot of babbling. I've had some complaints from my viewers that I talk too much. No, 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 no. You had notifications. I had notifications. That your videos could be shorter if you didn't talk so much. Yes. But I like it. Must be the first in, in the history of the world. <laughs> Likes to listen to wife talk. Good. He is taken, my ladies. <laughs> I have my oven on uh, three, uh, no, what is it? 180, 350? 180 Celsius, 350 Fahrenheit. I think it's hot now. I think this is pretty close. And again, this is going to go on top. Like this. Ole. <laughs> Ole. And just um, when you put the top part on, come look. Make sure the edges of the top kind of meet the bottom edge and kind of push them together. But this dough is pretty sticky, so you shouldn't have trouble sticking, well, having them stick together. We'll make an edge here in a minute, but just so they are touching. And these little bits, we can bake as cookies, because this is nice dough, tasty. And you can get fancy with your edge you want it. I normally just kind of pinch it so there's somewhat looks like someone you know cared <laughs> when they were making this but I also like these kind of rough edges because it shows that it's homemade. Just like this and last but not least I got a brush and um, the one egg white, there was two eggs, but uh, two yolks went into the, the dough and then this is the remaining egg white. And I have added just a little bit of water to it and just wiggled it around just a tiny bit to kind of break it up. And we're gonna brush our dough and this will make it nice and uh, kind of toasty brown. As you may have noticed, we are not pre-baking the bottom of this. But it should bake nice and even. I've made this cake one gazillion exactly times, so I know this will work. All right. And this shall go in the oven for about 45, 50 minutes, just depending on the oven. If I turn my convection oven on, it'll be a little faster, but I kind of like to keep it at a normal oven, non-convection type, uh, because I want the, the, the bottom and the innards to cook evenly too. So I will tell you, no. I will see you when this is at the oven. In she goes. My cake has been cooking, baking for 45 minutes. I covered it with tin foil about halfway through. That's Wisconsin for through. Because I didn't want it burning. And ta da! It's also been cooling on my counter for 10 minutes. But it is, I can't take it anymore. So I'm gonna, op I'm gonna open it. Open, the open it and this is why I like to do it on parchment because you can just 
onto the cutting board. Hot, 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 hot. And we are ready. Yes. It smells delicious in here. Crust is so nice and flaky. And look at our thick apple filling. I love corner pieces. How about you? They are my favorite as well. Are they? Mm -hmm. oh, I you didn't know that. You get on it. Yes, you do. Look at this. The dough, the dough looks like it's nice and cooked all the way around it. And see how a nice thick layer of apples you can you can do less apples if you want to, but why would you? I'm gonna try to not to burn my face and take a little bit of the apple. Mmm, it's so good. It's not overly sweet, and the dough is nice and crumbly. Look at it, it's just so soft and it's delicious. I hope you try this Polish cake. You can put ice cream on it too, right? Oh yeah. I hope you make it. I hope you check out my book. It's 86 pages, 30 recipes. It's a good deal. It's a small book, but it's a good deal. I hope you give me a like under my video, subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you next time. Smachnego. <laughs>